I went to the Ubuntu UK release party last week and unfortunately fell a little bit ill afterwards. Um, it wasn't all alcohol poisoning, I'll hasten to add, but uh, yeah, I'm okay now. So in this video, I'll be doing a review of Zubuntu 13.10. Now this has been a bit of a disappointing review for me. Uh, there's been very little improvement considering they've had the past six months to work on it. The new features that have been are uh, the theme configuration added, and actually that is quite a nice touch. I do like being able to adjust some of the colours quite quick and easily there. Uh, there's been some visual bug improvements to light DM and GTK3 theming. But other than that, that's it. There's a few other issues with the distro, uh, namely the sound indicator is not working. Now, I think this might only be for 64-bit releases, but there's a quick fix and I'll show you that during the review. There's also a couple of other visual issues where there's folder icons missing in the Funar file manager. But anyway, let's take more of a look at it. I'll start off with a new colour theming tool, so that's in the settings manager, theme configuration, you change the option there, so for custom highlight colours, switch that on, then choose new colour, select one from there. Here's one I chose earlier. Apply, and as you can see there, drag and highlight on the desktop, got a new green colour instead. And the applications at the top there have a nice green highlight to them. So that is rather nice. It's very quick and easy to change the colours, and if you want to put them back, just hit revert. I actually quite like that colour, I'm going to change it makes it look all a bit different. Now one of the immediate issues I noticed is that the indicator sound doesn't seem to be working. Now I think this is only affecting 64-bit releases, but it's quite easy to re-enable that. What you have to do, if you open up Terminal and paste in that command that I've put in the video description, so what that's doing, so sudo privileges said, which is just changing a string in a file, and I'm changing like that line there to make it become that in that file there. Yes, that's quite a long string, but it's only doing one thing. So press enter, put in the correct password, close that and you reboot. Well, there you go, that's the sound indicator now working. So taking a look at the desktop layout, top left you've got the application launcher. On the desktop you've got a few shortcut icons the bottom here we've got a panel with a few quick launch application icons. On the right hand side we've got sound control, network configuration, time date, calendar, desktop switcher and the shutdown menu. Now one of the other issues I've noticed, if you open up Funar, we do have this new icon theme. If you go to browse network, ah, the icons seem to be missing. But if I actually go onto one of my network drives, uh, the rest of the icons seem to be okay. Right, let's just go back to the home folder and yep, looking around, everything else still seems to be working okay for the icons. Now okay, it's only a couple that are missing, but you know, visual features in key components, it's not particularly good considering, as I've said, they've had six months to work on the system and done very little changes to it. I don't really have much more to say about the system, so I'll just take a look at what applications are pre-installed. So under accessories, well first off we have a run the program shortcut, so that's an application finder, so if you know the name you can start typing it in. So Abbey Word. The search results appear quite quickly. You, know, you can just press enter and open it up. Not quite as convenient though as the Unity launcher. But then again, that just depends on what you're after out of the system. I quite like the ease of use of Unity. But many people prefer the traditional menu style here that X-Face has. Right, under games, got a couple of basic games, Mines and Sudoku. Under graphics, we have GIMP Image Editor, GFUM Photo Organizer, and Ristretto, with the basic image viewer. Internet, we have Firefox for the web browser, Pigeon for Instant Messenger, Thunderbird for the email client, Multimedia, G Music Browser for Music Player, Brawler for the Video Player, uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control and XF Burn. Office, we have Lightweight, Abbey Word and G Numeric, as well as a couple of other applications there. Here's what I thought of Zubuntu 13.10. Ooh, 
yes. There's only one positive thing I've noted here, that's the new theme configuration added. Uh, I could have also listed about the slight speed improvements with kernel 3.11, but, hmm, dunno, not really, because I've uplifted the kernel in 13.04, which made a bit of an improvement, but if you're using 12.04, actually you're not really going to notice much difference. Unfortunately, the issues with it, there's some folder icons missing there in Funar File Manager, the sound indicator is not working, and that's now an issue with launchpad bug, yep, that number there. And the support time is only 9 months, which will take us to July 2014, but that's the same for all the Ubuntu 13.10 distros. So really, very little improvement in this release, and I wouldn't really say it's worth upgrading to. But unfortunately, if you're using Zubuntu 13.04, you're going to have to upgrade in December, because it will no longer be supported. But if you're using 12.04, 12.10, I wouldn't really bother with 13.10, I would hold back and wait to the next long-term support release of 14.04. So, overall, I've given this distro 68%. Thanks for watching, see you later.